Hello and welcome to game number one of a best out of three for the finals of the 4PL Cup. And we're going to have No Tide Hunter taking on DD. And uh, like I said, game number one, best out of three. Uh, for the people unfamiliar with 4PL, um, it is a two weekly cup. Every two weeks there is a cup. Everybody can sign up. I'm going to do mean everybody. Your younger brother, Radiant Navi, everything can happen. And um, there is prize, of course, at the end of the cup. It is a 400 euros. Winner takes it all. And mind you, it's euros, not dollars. But uh, winner takes it all. Nothing for the number two. Everything for the number one. And um, yesterday was the cup. And I have to say, normally, the finals don't happen on that same day. Ten which is why we have the finals today. Because the finals is the best out of three. The rest is all best out of one. A single elimination. You get one chance. That's it. And that is how No Tide Hunter got here. And that is also how DD got here. They both made it through their own brackets. And uh, that is why we can watch, hopefully, a, a very good match. So we'll see. We don't see an Undying, nor a uh, Bounty Hunter, nor Magnus, or a Bat Rider. Well, we see them, but they're on the banning side of this game. Uh, we have a Chikiru as the first picker for No Tide Hunter, which is quite unusual. Or at least. I say unusual, but it's not, I guess that's not true. I mean, Jakiro is a hero that's picked up often. Logical. But uh, as a first pick, no Tide Hunter might have a specific plan built around that, as we have a Chen picked up by DD together with a Dark Seer, and another support picked up by no Tide Hunter, as uh, the Keeper of the Light just got picked up, so no, no Shadow Demon. We've seen a lot of Shadow Demon and Jakiro lineups lately, but this is going to be a Keeper of Light Jakiro, so that will mean that we're probably going to see if this is going to be a trial lane. A hero that has his own disable. And yes, you might be thinking about uh, Sven, because he is of course still in the pool. But there's also heroes such as um, such as the Keeper, oh sorry, the what's it called? Chaos Knight. And of course, if you want to be really annoying, it might not have his own disable, but Phantom Lancer, Keeper of Light, is of course that combination that we know and hate and love. But they are taking their time, they're going into their bonus time for this draft, for this uh, this last pick before we go into the next banning phase, or at least for No Tide Hunter, because of course DD still has to pick up their own uh, third pick. Are we going to see them gi give away which carry they already want to pick up? Or do, do they want to secure something like a Templar Assassin, which is still in the pool? The hero that we normally see picked up early? No, no Templar Assassin, it's a Nature's Prophet. And I like this, in a way. I like this because it's not something that we normally see. It is still possible for Nature's Prophet to go inside the jungle and leave the Keeper of the Light in the offlane. It is even possible to have the Jakiro solo mid. And um, I will switch on and off the in-game microphone because apparently remaining. it is um it is was off there Five seconds I know it's a bit awkward Templar sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and there's still a Templar assassin Dyer so that's the one that we were expecting that will mean that DD is probably gonna ban on something like a Queen of Pain might not be the real counter to Templar assassin but will be able to hold her own and, and does pretty well against her uh, with no tide on her I mean they realize that everything that DD still needs is basically a dual lane so we're gonna see heroes banned out that will accompany that, th that will support that. Like, for example, Shadow Demon. I mean, no supports needed on Tide Hunter anymore. So there is just that. Oh, you can ban out all those heart, all those supports that are normally picked up, like Shadow Demon. Uh, yeah, Shadow Demon, as well as maybe the Bane, the Shrek, Lena, Five those kind of things. Remaining. And there is a Rubik, well, yeah. also one of those supports. And there is a Nyx Assassin. That's interesting, Dyer actually, because Nyx Assassin, I mean, yes, he is often picked up in combination with the Keeper of the Light. But as I just said, no Tide Hunter, no longer a need for a support, or at least in theory. I mean, we have seen Jakiro solo made against the Templar Assassin. Luna now getting banned out. Also another one on a dual lane. With a Chen, for example, that is very annoying to Dyer deal with. Uh, Chen... Back. Uh, getting that extra pushing power also before his creeps for, with the lunar blessing of Luna. Not gonna be happening. As we have a uh, Sven band out. No real surprise because we know that Sven would be good for no Tide Hunter with the Jakiro and the Keeper of Light. And they pick him up often as well. Of course, we've got plenty of heroes still, and that might be doing the same job, like a Chaos Knight. 
As we're waiting for the last man out for no tie down to. And I did turn on the in-game audio, but there is unfortunately two minutes delay. So hopefully we'll be able to... Uh, well, it, it, we should have worked. Five actually. seconds remaining. In-game audio. Should be working. Wisp Dyer gets banned out there. Pick. Also, of course, a strong one for dual lane and the Gyrocopter is the last one. One that I'm pretty uh, pretty sad about. I mean, we've seen we've seen lineups that would favor favor Gyrocopters a lot, but Gyrocopter has been mostly on the banning side in those situations, which is I mean is logical because obviously people would rather ban out a hero than know that it's gonna be picked up and be annoying. But personally, I like him. Ten but, seconds yeah. remaining. Can't expect the teams to uh, to keep that in mind. So you have uh, no tight hunter. Uh, they have got the first pick. Reserve time. Uh, we'll see uh, what hero they're gonna pick up. Is it gonna be a Chaos Knight, for example, like with the Jakiro Keeper of Light? Is it gonna be a different hero that will work well together on a trial lane, or will we actually see a Keeper of Light solo lane? It is all Tinker. possible. Tinker. Okay. So Tinker mid is actually Radiant pretty decent against Templar pick. Assassin. With the Martian Machines. No refraction. And the laser, more importantly, that mischance chance will make sure that Templar Assassin cannot last hit properly. And that's the way you shut her down mid. With that Tinker. And that is looking like a very global strategy. Now, you have got a Tinker with Boots of Travel at some point. You've got the Nature Prophet TP, and you've got the Recall from Keeper of the Light. So if there is a Keeper of the Light, like a, like a Denzel in distress, stress all of a sudden, there could be three extra heroes there in no time, with the Nature Prophet TPing in, Tinker TPing in, and Keeper of the Light calling someone else in on his own. Which could either be the Jakiro or the one that's going to be picked up last. Now that is pretty scary. As we're seeing uh, the, la the second last pickup for DD. Like we know, we know that they need to go for dual lane. We still have the uh, the Chaos Knight in if they want to secure a carry first, which they might want to do because if they don't, then they run the risk of no tight onto picking up their carry. However, they have got the last pick, so there is a small chance that they just want to make sure that no tight hunter doesn't know which hero they're going to be up against until that very last moment. And that is, of course, something worth doing. For example, Ricky. I mean, it, we haven't seen a Ricky in ages. We haven't seen a Crystal Maiden in ages. This is an interesting choice of a support. And there's a Lifestealer as the last one, so... Okay. So, imagine Keeper of the Light being in trouble, right? Lifestealer jumps in the Nature's Prophet, Tinker boots a travel, Nature's Prophet TPs, and Jakiro gets a recall. All of a sudden, five period people on the same lane as the Keeper of Light. I like it. I like this strategy a lot. A global strat and a bit of a uh, annoying one to deal with. And there's... There's a sniper. Now... Now they're up against the lineup with an Aegis Prophet and a Tinker, and a Keeper of Light in that, for that matter. Three heroes that are so... such hard-pushing heroes. Sniper needs quite a bit of time to get his items up. Crystal Maiden, I don't think two illuminates and she's dead. And the team fight is not really there for DD either. I'm, I'm quite curious to see how they're gonna be doing here because personally I have not seen the sniper in ages, and I doubt you have. And on top of that, Ten seconds remaining. the lineup from the Titan Dental looks pretty damn strong. Five seconds remaining. Headshot is still very annoying though. Like if you're gonna, tr th in that case, I mean, in that sense, nobody can TP out when there is the there is the uh, the sniper around, because you'll get interrupted constantly. By the headshots. And that is, I guess, nice to see on the side of, of uh, DD. But he needs to be everywhere because there's a lot of TPing heroes. But let's see who's playing what. 
Because we have DD. I know that some of you might not be familiar, but a lot should be familiar because there's a lot of people that we know uh, that are in this team. As, um, for example, this is uh, part of the lineup of the previous SK Gaming and Quantic, etc. But uh, but just to, to go over the heroes, we have Ryze playing the Crystal Main, Link will be playing the Sniper, Calculus on his Chen, Shokska, of course, uh, on the Templar Assassin is going to be going mid here, and Crit on the Darkseer. Well, I have to say, um, the Darkseer, or Crit, sorry, is the player that we've seen going mid most of the times, with Shokska actually going on the off lane. So I'm quite curious if they might be switching, switching around, or maybe go for, um, nah, I think it's Shocks going to be mid. I think Calculus is, is kind of anno annoyed, but he, uh, yeah, Lola should be back shortly. But in the meantime, let's go over the rest. We have got Aki playing the Keeper of Light, S4 on his Tinker, Turno Envy playing the Jakiro, Admiral Bulldog on the Nature's Prophet, and that will leave uh, Loda, of course, to be playing that Life Stealer. And in case you're wondering, uh, Nature's Prophet is indeed one of those heroes that is um, one of their, his heroes that he actually plays. So, no no alarm, no alarm. It might not be a bounty hunter or a lone druid, but he knows perfectly well how to handle a Nature's Prophet. And personally, I think the lineup for No Tide Hunter is pretty strong, and it will be very difficult for DD to prolong the game for a sniper to actually make a difference. Though I have to say, it's the best out of three. And this is only game number one, so everything can, can still happen, even if they might not take game one. They might take game two. They might try out some new stuff. And there goes the ready. Even though Lona hasn't picked up his hero yet. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Let's see who's going, uh, who's going where. As, um... Well, for now, everybody's going bottom. We have some wards up on Calculus. Actually, no wards up on Crystal Main. She uh, she picked up two uh, two branches indeed. I'm 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 still quite surprised about this lineup. I mean, lineup for, ex for well, these two most of all, the Sniper and the Crystal Maiden. I mean, Crystal Maiden as support has lately not been that much in favor because she is just very squishy. She uh, has of course had the buff on her ultimate, but. There's just a lot of different heroes that h can help work out better. Like, for example, the Jakiro, the Shadow Demon, the Rubik, all those type of heroes. But the Crystal Maiden, we're going to see her back in action in this game. And I'm, I'm curious to see how it goes. As we have already no time to ro rotating towards that lane. It's going to be Admiral Bulldog on the off lane bottom. We're going to see S4. Mid lane and indeed a tri lane, a safe tri lane for no time on the top lane. And they will probably be up against uh, this guy, Crit, on his dark seer. So is already going back towards the top lane. As uh, well, he's, he'll be having a tough time if he tries to get some experience. But the iron shell will actually be okay to deal with the life seal. Of course, life seal can heal himself up with just eating meat of creeps. But um, yeah, I think I think both should be okay in theory. This should not be the first blood un unless Chris is very, uh, very careless, and he might actually decide to go into his own jungle to farm there because with the illuminate, with the ice path, dual breath, he might not be wanting to stay on the top lane very long. There's a lot of slows, and yes, surge is nice and everything, but um, it might it just not be enough. As we have Shokska in the middle lane taking on the Tinker. Now I do think both of these should not die. In terms of last hits, it might actually be S4 coming ahead of this, depending on... Uh, yeah, he did pick up his laser, so wants to make Shokska miss his last hits. And that is going to be very annoying to deal with for him. As we have Nature's Prophet... Oh, hello. They do see each other. It is daytime. Uh, we've got uh, wards up here for the Radiant side only. Not uh, not, not even an attempt to block Fredmo Bullock. He's, of course, going to try to push... Uh, to pull the lane, rather, with his uh, one Treant, who's going to be f getting a Frostbite and will be probably dropping... So that's going to be that actually extra gold going in the way of Rise, extra experience as well, so that's nice. And that will mean that the lane will be maybe slightly pushed in away because it still was a slight distraction of the creep wave. Uh, but that's also, that, that's why we see this happening. That's why we see Link risking his life at Frostbite just to make sure that Bulldog goes away. But uh, Link wanted to make sure that the creep wave did not go below the tower and that is, uh, that is why he tanked it off there for a while. As otherwise the lane would have been pushed and that's not ideal to have at this time. As we have uh, is actually Keeper of the Light 
who is getting most last hits, but that's because he's just blasting away on those small camps, so we can't really take the, his last hits into account for uh, for last hits in general on the on the, uh, on the map with crit. He has been getting some experience, so that's nice, but Keeper of Light will now come and help out to make sure that that's not going to be happening anymore. So we have got already level 2 up on the Keeper of Light, also Loda just last hit, and he's free farming. I mean, he should be doing just fine. Now we should, of course, compare him a bit on last hit to the Sniper. Sniper who is uh, no, no, no. got six last hits, nine for low down the top lane. And I mean, I mean, this is this is a pretty dangerous lane for uh, for Bulldog, and he's actually gonna get ganked here also. Uh, there comes Shrapnel. Bulldog should be first blood. There goes the sun, and that's a very clear and simple first blood. And also, I mean, that's just a result of not having any wards, and of course they should have known that there were, that there is actually a Chen in the jungle. So I do think Edward Bulldog just slightly over extension here, having no war, uh, no um, Crystal Maiden, or oh, Crystal Maiden, I mean no Treyon standing around here. I mean Treyons could be human wards and stuff, well, tree wards I guess, to try and make sure that he is safe. And like I said, with that headshot, um, he doesn't have headshot, well, with a the frostbite then, but when he has headshot, he, TPing away is going to be difficult for Bulldog, especially if there's also going to be a centaur. Nice stack. Just making sure I can get more creeps there. So we have got uh, Shorkska on 11 for 3 in the mid lane. S4. 10 for 7. So uh, still well, still fairly even actually. With a double damage right now upon a Templar Assassin, it's pretty dangerous for S4. Look at that spill damage going through. That is pretty painful. But uh, not doing as much with the lasers as I thought I would he would be doing, or at least not hurting Shokska as much as um, I thought he would be doing. As we now have uh, Chen, gonna place a ward, no more stacking for you as uh, the Treyant was stacking. But that's not gonna be happening anytime soon anymore, well at least he might try, but not gonna be, uh, not gonna be going on anymore. And the one Treyant, two Treyants actually, it's gonna be warding. This is what they should be doing. Seeing where people are, seeing when he is gonna be ganked, knowing when he's safe, when he's not safe. Crit in the meantime, level 1 still. I mean, like I said, he's not going to have an easy time getting close towards Loda. And Loda now gets another salve because he is very low on life, even with that iron shell damage going through. Even with him, his possibility to eat himself back to full, it's just too much. As we have uh, a smoke up here for for DD, let's see if they can do something. And invisibility moving up on Shotska will definitely attack. help out. And it's actually uh, a bottle that could drop their barriers for. And it looks like they thought that they were spotted, but... As in S4 went went away from the lane, but they will go for for, uh, for Admiral Bullock instead. Hello, there goes the shots. There goes the TP. No headshot, but not needed. Tesla Faith doing the job. Two kills now for Calculus. Pretty clear kill once again. It's a shame that Sniper is not getting those last hits though. I mean, Sniper is of course. Oh wait a second, S4. Are you okay? Looks uh, looks to be okay. Reflection on. Spill damage, of course, is going to be aimed by uh, Shock Sky if he can. Not gonna happen. But yeah, Sniper, I mean, he's a hero that needs a lot of farm, which is why you normally don't see him, because he, in theory, is easy to shut down. And in theory, is just a squishy carry later on also. But if he gets, if he would have gotten those skills, that would have made such a difference. He's already got 1600 gold, though. He's 23 last hits, he's on par with the life stealer. Though if you later on have a one-on-one -on -one fight with Sniper and life stealer, I do think it's gonna be life stealer that still will win the fight. We'll find out if he has to, though. Trap goes up, S4 trouble, S2 has bottle charges, gonna land a laser, rockets, this might actually end bad for Shokskai, he doesn't have a refraction, but will be fine again. <laughs> and no more mana up on a tinker to do uh, any more than that. Well, that's the laser doing his work in the meantime, Illuminate's gonna come in from the side. Nice. But the refraction will make sure that it doesn't matter anymore. 700 gold up by the Keeper of Light, he doesn't have boots yet, but we'll be able to pick it up if he goes, uh, goes home. Blow the hand of Midas complete, so we'll be able to farm a bit faster as we see Sniper not buy buying anything yet, but he has bought something, but the courier is actually standing still. Uh, this is a waste. Radiance middle the hand of Midas is in the courier, and this is wasting time for Link. There it goes, he stood still for a second to send it again. Mikering, Link, Mikering. But, um, 
It will be uh, it will be linked to the Hazard Hand of Midas as well. Of course, we have to keep in mind that now the Hand of Midas is earlier up on Lifestealer than it is on Link, as he even got at least uh, one extra charge up uh, off before Link gets it. So that's a slight difference there, and should be going the way of No Tidehunter, of course, on the Dire side. As we have the Gold Graph going the way of DD, and that's uh, the main difference of having a uh, solid jungle hero in the Chen. And uh, of course, as well as um, the two kills that happened on this guy. He's uh, died twice, he's got five last hits, and if you look at his uh, nemesis, I mean, he might not have any last hits, but he did not die. He's level two. Happy times, he has a surge. Not even gonna try to come in range more, though, and now finally going into the jungle. Something that I uh, suggested for him to do earlier already. We have a Marchioner Machines. Centaur is just gonna stand there, walk through it, maybe. Uh, they do realize this, though. The exclamation mark from the Keeper of Light came out. Trap is still gonna hit. S4. Trouble. There's a Centaur. Gonna come in from the sun. Will not hit. Nice dodge by S4. Damage going through to the high ground with him. And that Radiant's is not gonna be a kill anymore. Rockets will fly. Not hit. Would have probably killed Vyz if he was still there around there. That's why he pops the salvo. So. But that is a, uh, a, a second gank on S4 that doesn't work out. Uh, okay, okay, the first one that we saw was not really a gank. But, well, it started off as a gank and then they, they still got a kill up on the bottom lane, of course. Radiant and they're gonna try again, Rise. Gonna walk through the marks of the machines. Uh, placing a ward and actually walks through it again. Has to be very careful. Did get scouted out though, but Radiant's we'll be fine. In the meantime, tower, tower top goes down. No, nothing really that, uh, that crit can do here, to be fair. Rockets flying, Rise, he has to be so careful. He is such a squishy hero. Like the moment that no title to decides to go fight, that is gonna be um, that's gonna be very dangerous time for him. In the meantime, no title to will first just continue pushing and until nobody else is coming to stop him. But stop them, that is. They will just uh, continue doing so. And with the illuminate, I mean creep waves are no Radiant's issue. You have a dual breath, you have liquid fire for some extra pushing power on the tower. It is uh, definitely nice. Crystal Maiden meets at level 4, going back to base, too low on HP and um, Ana to still continue uh, being Crystal Maiden. Oh, is he gonna go for this? Ah, he just clears out the creep wave. And there goes Ana Midas, making sure that the Iron Shell is also not gonna be an issue. Illuminate going through, and still nobody helping. Still is only crit here. And that's gonna be Targo, no, not Iron Shell. That actually pushes the creep wave away, but they might still get it anyway. As now Loda will uh, tank up the creep, uh, the tower slow. Tower Here comes Nature's Prophet. He will tank it, and more Bulldog. Leaving his lane, he couldn't do anything anyway, and he actually gets Radiant's the tower money for that one. Has fallen. Four heroes, top. And they just took down two towers like it was nothing. Gold Graph, therefore, quickly dropping down again. S4 in the meantime. Has got a soul ring, of course, building towards his boots of travel. In the meantime, he'll just continue being mid until he has that, and if he gets shut down too much, then he'll. Well, we'll form ancients instead, even though the ward is still there. Or is there again, I should say, because this is a new one. But they, uh, yeah, DD needs to do this. They need to shut down a Tinker. And that's the way they can. In the meantime, Sniper. <laughs> He's doing okay on last hit. He's actually slightly ahead of uh, life here right now, but those towers, of course, make that difference uh, non existent anymore. And as for now, finally gonna be. Getting some of the ancients here. As Nature's Prophet TP's in to help out. And they now place it towards seeing the sentry ward that is there. Or should any, anyway. And they will, uh, they will clear it out. Well, first the ancients, then the ward. Probably. Haste room by the Templar Assassin might be going for a, um, a, a kill with that. If she wants to. Maybe help out in the bottom lane, illuminate, we'll do a lot of damage to Shock Skull, also no refraction up. There's the refraction. Ours. But uh, Aki just getting some uh, some experience, as now the exclamation mark comes off from uh, from Calculus. They are doing the creeps. And I realize that because Tinker is missing, and he doesn't have his boots of travel yet. And he will be getting these ancients now as well, with uh, now having 1200 gold. 1400 gold, sorry, with the dragon. So just 600 needed before he can get his boots to travel. In the meantime, and let's just switch to networks because that's a bit more important now. We do see, of course, life Lifestealer ahead of that. Both because of towers and because he got the hand of minus a bit earlier. But we haven't seen Tinker being shut down at all. I mean, he is just 
Happily farming. I think no title interest. Thinking, you know what? They picked up a sniper. We can deal with a sniper. Let's just leave him and, you know, take care of him later on. So we have to face only four heroes of our opponents while doing our thing. I'm, I'm quite curious if that's not underestimating the sniper. Because, yes, it is a squishy carry. And it is not a hero that we normally see because of those uh, of, of that reason, and of course, he just needs a lot before he can 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 get good. He needs a good start, but he is getting a good start. He had a good start. He also has a uh, drums of endurance. Oh, they want to go for him. Finally, they try to shut him down. Here they come. Let's see who's gonna be first. They're gonna be Sprout. Ice Path. He walks right into that one. That was an awkward Ice Path, but the kill was there anyway, and that was also a nice bomb. Sniper. No escape mechanism. Goes down, and all of a sudden. All of a sudden, fight! There's two heroes down! DD coming in, haste rune of Shokska working out, and that's gonna be another kill! Triple kill for Shokska! And this might be even more, Lora! Toggles his armlet, but it's gonna be too much, and that is an ultra kill for Shokska! How did that happen? So fast! They went for one gank, they went with the massive light night bomb, they had four heroes there, Admiral Bulldog had his uh, at the life stealer in him, and now Shokska gonna go for him. Nice Sprout trying to save his life. Martian machines will at least stop Shokska from chasing that, but that was nice anticipation of uh, of DD. I have to say, yes, they sacrificed Dyer's a sniper, but they got so much more back. Templar assassin, four kills now. That was the f that was the first time that Shokska actually decided, let's just leave my lane and try to get some kills. Well, he did, and he got four. He also got his face boots, of course, a uh, medallion of courage, and that was the first time that a lot of heroes Dyer's from the Tyrant died. Under attack. Um, first time uh, for everybody, apart from Patinka, because he wasn't there, so he didn't die. The only one that didn't die, um, that is. But a uh, great play coming up from uh, from DD. I mean, I the gank was there. I mean, the ice was a bit, bit awkward, but you know, t sniper walked in there anyway, and they killed him, and then they figured nice. But then from behind, I mean. Ganking someone near tier 1 tower is always dangerous because of course you can have those TPs incoming Which to travel by the way And uh, DD they just uh, They just made it work And I realized I might have should have gotten up earlier because Well Focus isn't what it should But that's okay That's okay um, yeah, but with the boots of travel up on S4, I mean, there's no towers down just yet, and no tide on turn, and I didn't get any tower in return for that ultra kill either on the bottom lane. But it's gonna be even more difficult now to take down towers, and they really, really need to bank on that late game. And, and as far as turtle potential go, Darkseer's a nice hero there. As in, that's nice to say, but Jakirox is a nine tower. Why do they just prove my point? As in, this proved my point, because the tower still dropped, of course, the S4 just sticking mid, but... Um, I do think it's gonna come down to DD being, in theory, slightly behind mid-game, because right now no Titan is where they want to be with the uh, Boots of Travel there. And, um... That means that we should see DD do some turtling, but they have got the Dark Sea, there's a nice, but it's very difficult to turtle against the lineup that no Titan has. So I'm still, I'm still curious. I mean, that was brilliant play from Shukska, but he's again stuck in the middle lane, and well, stuck. He is there. He has his blink dagger now as well, and we still see him farming. And I do think that maybe he should try to get some more kills, but hey, who am I to to expect that one? As uh, far as wards go, they are doing okay. As in coverage, to see where they actually can gank. They have got this uh, room spot covered. They've got the bottom lane covered again as well. Um, four, of course, for no time. They have got the same. Uh, the rune spot and the mid lane that is, and of course they finally can stack ancients without uh, being uh, well blocked by wards. And that's gonna 1600 gold. He is gonna be very dangerous very soon. He might not have a hand of Midas, but he doesn't really need that. And we see how Dyer's fast his net worth is spiking up. Under attack. I mean, yeah, he wasn't doing bad mid lane regardless, but uh, with those ancients, it just goes so fast. And we see that mostly out of gold per minute also. It's now higher than the Tinker that actually has a Hand of Midas. T a Tinker? I mean Sniper. Also, a dude that makes the same kind of noises. I do think that maybe it was the, the same voice. Look at them. Look at their faces. Maybe they would be brothers. I mean, both tinkering. Look at the go goggles. 
Both having goggles. That's why I made the mistake. Makes sense. But yeah, 17 out of gold. Curious to see what he's gonna go for. That's Crystal Maiden. We haven't really seen much of her this fight, which is actually good. She actually got assists on four kills already. And she hasn't died yet, which is something that is pretty admirable in a Crystal Maiden. But for her comes the trouble point right now that at this time you don't want to be on your on the lanes because that's where your carries are, that's where your uh that that's where your um uh, your semi carries also are and just uh, are farming and you don't want to be taking the farm nor experience because you know it should all go to your carries and semi carries. She is farming in the jungle, which sometimes also is not ideal, but uh, with only a Chen here, Chen is of course in the, in the jungle, but you know, she, she times it properly and the, by the time Chen is here, there will be new creeps also. She's not going to go for the small creep wave. If she's fast enough, that will be a new spawn as well. And she's, he's trying to. He's trying to. When I asked too late. That's a shame. Middle tower is under attack. But, uh, but yeah, it is, uh, it is hard for Crystal Main at this time to still find, find farm without putting yourself at risk, of course, because if you're going to be farming by yourself, that's not going to be any ideal. Another tower getting denied. This is the second tower that gets denied no tide hunter. Has been denied. Well, towers are now even, though, of course, uh, bar for the fact that it was in the night. They got a bit of vision here to see if the Templar Assassin that has got that line up for Roshan is um, not trying Roshan. And I, say, I mean lineup, but I mean actually the medallion. With the medallion, with the melt damage, you will be able to take down Roshan by yourself, even with teammates if you want to, but you don't really need them anymore. As right now, this is what I mean. Like, this is an obvious push. So this is where the marching machine is going to hit. Traps going down. There is, of course, a TP, but they're going to dive this. He is, might be able to take down uh, Shokska, though, and he does. Still goes down, but the hand of God comes too late. Nature's Prophet. Uh, T uh, Ultimate going through. Is he going to TP? No. Tinker TP, though, and now he TPs here. About back and TP. Blinks. Hello, Calculus. Fire, Calculus. Nice one. And that is why you don't fight in the marching machine. TA buying back now as well because I do think they realize Roshan is being attempted here by No Tide Hunter. And they could do that. They save their tower. They take kills, and that's all as for two for one. A buys back, four star buyback off the opponent's side. But definitely worth it as Aki is gonna not get hit by uh, by Link. He's gonna go for uh, not for Loda because he just raged. Would have been a good target, but he actually changed his mind for that for that also. Uh, we have a regeneration rune. Someone should be coming for it. Who are they gonna bait? <laughs> just, uh, just uh, okay. Then just deny it. Then just deny it. In the meantime, Templar assassin like we saw, Blink Dagger. Curious to see if she's gonna go for Desolator next, um, or for BKB now. If she's gonna go for BKB, of course, the Martian machines will still hurt. But considering Life Seed already has that BKB, I mean, it might just be nice. Ice paths are very annoying, and especially for refractions, the liquid fire, the uh, dual breath. You don't want to be, uh, you know, when you, you well, you want to be having a refraction, even though you know, march of the machines. But it is still nice to get a BKB at this stage, though. Shocks at this point is quite far ahead. I might just, uh, I might just want to go for this later to to just continue taking kills. The Illuminate is going to go through, but there is a refraction up, and it doesn't even hit. As we have got Tinker continuing to push out. I mean, this is what this is S4's job. Just continuously march up the machining and then TPing out, TPing elsewhere, marching the machines, TPing out, TPing elsewhere, using his blink and farming up because he is farming fast. I have to say, I'm quite surprised that actually Sniper, without getting any extra kills, is uh, doing so well on the farm. He is uh, keeping up with the Tinker as well as with the Life Stealer. 1800 gold, picked himself up an Ultimate Orb. Might be going for a mount style. Uh, we're going to see Life Seater taking care of some of uh, the creeps here. He is uh, picked up Mintu Hammer, so might be going for that later as well. As you know, he doesn't want to BKB. He has a built in BKB, so he's fine in regards to that one. As we have Calculus, he has his mechanism complete. More heals for them, even though, of course, we saw the heal going through earlier. That was a bit too late. We have got a, a hood up on uh, the Darks here, so going for a pipe there. Rise, roaming around. Level 8 still. The same level as last time we, uh, we checked in on her. On him, sorry. Um, but just uh, walking back and forth, I mean, she can also stack up the Ancients. But uh, right now it is Calculus that will take them. And Rise will just stick around for the experience for it. And that's uh, that's very welcome. He's now level 9. That's the same reason as why Eternal Envy is around Dyer's here. Uh, because he wanted to share on the experience that that gave. Uh, the Ancients that are still continuously being stacked. And that is something that, of course, No Tidehunter does 
That's what they're known for. I mean, uh, just make sure that no creep is wasted. Make sure that ancients are being stacked every single time, every single minute. Just to make sure that Tinker will not waste any time. And look at that. We just saw the, we just saw the net worth already. This is with the gold of the ancients. Um, though I do think that it is a uh, sniper that has something in the courier that uh, also works with that. Yes, there's a Yasha. So that's going to be Mantis I'll complete fairly soon. And Roshan was, of course, uh, aborted earlier on. Not going to be taken down again, or at least attempted to. There's an exclamation mark, though. I do think that they realize something like that is going on. They only have a board here, so they don't necessarily see that. But uh, one of ten creeps, or maybe all three, will just be checking out if there's actually something there. And maybe even one of the other. But uh, it might be just too late. Illuminate going through. There is, of course, the ten creeps. And that is also the Roshan Den. And it is uh, Loda that picks up the ages. Loda, who actually finished up in Minter Hammer. Oh, I love this. People that watch my, watch my cast more, my cast more orf often, wow, English, I know, know that I, I like having Maelstrom's up on, uh, oh, basically anything, okay, I won't lie. But the Life Stealers, of course, as well, Life Stealers with Lightning, so it's good. Maelstrom is going to be the case for him. And uh, very good also, I mean, they have got the damage, he doesn't really need the Desolator just de yet, as in, he might be picking up later for the Minus Armor, but it's not like they lack damage. And it's not like they're fighting against heroes that they have to attack very long before they're dead and yes that is me saying that BG has quite squishy heroes I mean Templar Assassin is a very squishy hero it's just that she has refraction 2700 gold up on uh, Panshokska and so we still have no extra towers down on the side of uh, DD since, the since of course the push on the top lane which is quite surprising but Tinker I mean Sniper is just I mean, he is constantly bottom, and the last time no time no hunter went for him, well, they felt that they shouldn't be doing that because they had uh, they gave him up to kill the shocks guy. But they are letting sniper free farm constantly. The only kills he's been in and deaths that is is only on the bottom lane. He's level 14. Tinker is higher level, but that's because of the ancients also, and just just because he's Tinker, because he now picked up an ultimate orb. Maybe going for a uh, for a sheep stick. If he's gonna make sure that there's not gonna be anybody taken down to tier one top. Last time we did the same thing. Rockets flying. It's crit only here though. He has a pipe complete, but yeah, they won't be taken down uh, that tower for now. As a rise, can he TP out? No. Nope. That is what I've been saying. Like if he is found, he's dead. Like there's no chance for him. He tried to TP out, but it's just too much damage. And it is actually uh, Lodo that picked up the kill. And he already has a Mjolnir, so he is, uh, he's farming insanely well, as we know, of course, we saw his net worth. It is no surprise that he is farming well. Yeah, for the people wondering why Sniper is going for Manta style rather than anything else, is, is of course, I mean, he knows he's a squishy hero. And if you're gonna pop your Manta style, at least that's, that's some form of, of escape mechanism of making sure that they're not going for, for him. Bulldog, you're gonna be able to TP out. Need that vision. I mean, the headshots can interrupt teleports, but you know you need to actually shoot shoot him if you want to do that. But uh, but yeah, that's that's the reason. I mean, he doesn't have his own build and escape mechanism, which is also why you'll see a lot of snipers Radiant's that actually have got um, low star edges or shadow blades. That is open wounds, rise, rages. That is already one down. Mel damage going through. They want to take him down. He jumps in tight. Chen creep though, and jumps up by Chen creep, and that is low. That should be able to get himself out of that one. I like that the Calculus has two troll warlords though, I mean that ensnare is pretty pretty dangerous also for Lifestealer of course, goes through rage, through BKB. A sniper leaving the lane for the first time, not successful either. Still having his uh, Crystal Main going down and this is what we are going to see. Crystal Main has to play it so careful. I mean at least the Jakiro can land an ice path or something. If he is uh, getting attacked, though having said that, if Lifestealer actually goes for Jakiro, um, they know that they're on the same team, but in a, in a hypothetical, hypothetical situation, I don't think that Jakiro will be able to get away from that one either. Then we have four heroes in the bottom lane. All four from Low Tide Hunter. And uh, we've got four heroes uh, from from um, DD as well. There's now five heroes, by the way. Open wounds. There is the Mount of Cell. That definitely helps. Surge Awake gets turned into a Pickup by this cheap stick that's done on a Tinker. But it doesn't matter. Too fast. Such, such a fast cheap. And that's uh, the match still done. And the media loader has the tech stuff because it's getting very low. A nice ice pad. Heal. Hand of God going through. Vacuum. 
going through. There goes the agent already gone. It is S4 that drops first. Loda back up. Who's he gonna go for? Is he just gonna try to get himself out of there? Looks like it. Admiral Bulldog trying to do what he can. BKB up on Shokska. Just right clicks though from Loda. Will take him down. There's the meld helping out. Sniper now. Getting surged away. Will be fine again. There is a frostbite up on Lifestealer. Who's he gonna go for? Crit. And there's gonna be a headshot. Bam! You are dead. And that is Link picking him up. Now Aki gonna try to run away from this one. Still takes it from the tower. But the test of faith is gonna pick him up. And now Envy by himself. I spent Letcher's on Link, but doesn't matter. Dark Seer's Iron Shell will take care of the dirty work. And that is gonna be everybody going down. Apart from Bulldog. Because he stayed alive, he actually TP'd out and is uh, forcing down uh, the tier 1 tower, which he might get the knife yet. But no, no, it is the Necronomicon Warriors that pick it up. But what a fight bottom, and I have to say, Sniper is working out great with the Dark Seer wall, with the Surge. They can't chase him. They don't have the potential, and even if they slow him down, at least once he came out a split. And he, he went back and attacked stuff, and it was working out fine. Dark Sea Roll, of course, was brilliant in that fight. Just in the middle of everything. Vacuum of all four. Just uh, massive damage going through. And uh, we're gonna see no time. I mean, they realize that right now they have forced out a fight twice. Twice on the bottom lane, twice they kinda lost four heroes. They still don't have the tier one tower mid uh, bottom, that is, because mid they took, just took down, of course. So I don't think they should be going for teamfight. They have such a good lineup for split pushing, so that's probably the game that they should be playing. We're gonna see if they're gonna be able to do that. Keeper of Light and Jakiro hanging around here by themselves, so just the two supports. A sneaker TPs into Shocks that turns him into a piglet. Can he do more? Nah, he just forced him away. Rockers will still fly, but the fraction is on there and he just TPs out. Making sure that the lane is pushed out. Now is gonna be Rise and Calculus coming in. TP in here from the Tinker. Already a shrapnel going through. Rockets will hit. 2600 gold already up on the Sniper. Sniper who's only died that one time that we saw him die on the bottom lane right about here. Well, he's chased around there. So, Four heroes again in the bottom lane for DD. Shock's got going top again. We got our BKB ready still. He could be not in time to stop that from going through, but you know, S4 cannot do anything just yet, not by himself. But uh, he won't be by himself for very much longer because there he is coming in. Loda coming in, H Prophet could be TPing in, but he gets away. He's just fine, right? Still farming in the jungle. We'll take a look, quick look at the gold graph. It is in favor of No Tide Hunter. But that's mostly because of their split pushing and because of the Tinker constantly farming. The team fights are going the way of DD, which is why we see this one being a bit more even. Uh, still in favor of Low Tide Hunter, but the difference is minimum, minimal. But that is uh, that is the game of DD. I mean, they just have to wait until Sniper just continues farming up, so Sniper is bigger. They have to make Shock Sky into kind of a semi carry. And uh, in the meantime, I mean, she will be, of course, uh, of big impact in a fight like that, but she shouldn't be trying to go out and kill stuff, because that's just too much mobility up on Otai Hunter. If you go on someone before you know it, there will be uh, more than just that one hero that you were trying to gank. And let's see if these can do something here. They smoked up, so this ward is not catching out anything. Here they come, S4 inside the web, there comes a headshot, Ice Fast trying to help out, S4 already going down so fast! And he pops a Ghost Scepter, Test of Faith doing so much damage with that one. But it is actually Sniper that picks up the kills. Crystal Maiden of course still dies, Loda just eating her up. Vacuum doesn't work on the Rage, Loda who tries to chase down Calculus. Can he get a man of God going through? Doesn't have a Rage for another 4 seconds. Won't be able to get the chance to pop it because he goes down. And it is Aki that tries to run away from this one as well. Nature's Prophet, gonna be able to TP out. And the TP out also came from the Keeper of the Light. Again, nice fight for DD. Great setup. and. Radiant I mean, Ghost after on the Tinker, attack. yes, it stops you from taking damage from the Sniper, because that's just a counter to Sniper, of course, but Dyer's that Test of Faith was, was no joke. Test of Faith, when you are in a Ghost after, 40% extra magic damage, that's what you take. That's you dead. Near the tower, being under attack, I'm probably going down. No real surprise. Oh. Luminates.
And it actually shocks how the pixel the tower hit. I'm quite quite curious to see what he's gonna go for next. If he's still gonna go for Desolator for the more minus armor, of course, or if he'd rather go as for uh for a bit of a more semi carry item. As we have Roshan back up again sh shortly, one minute to go. Might have a fight again uh, for that one, even though I mean no tight on the last couple of team fights that they took they they were didn't really work out. But maybe they can try to bait DD in coming somewhere and then go for Roshan instead. I mean they have got a lineup that has multiple people that can initiate already on Roshan with the with the life stealer being there by himself perhaps with the nature's prophet being there by himself. They could do that. Necronomical level three and from Bulldog, so more pushing of course uh, going through. Also something that you can set up on the sniper. I mean sniper is uh is a hero that doesn't use that much mana. I mean there's not that many mana thingies up on him. But still, the assassinate is really annoying to deal with. So if you can set the mana burning Necronomicon warrior unit archer then um, on him, it will actually help out a lot in those kind of fights. He still is a uh, squishy or basher up on Loda. You have had so Edge up. I want basher. Loda trying to get himself away. Look at that damage. And the surge there also. Now he opens up. Overwounds gets cancelled out. And he jumps himself inside the creep. Jumps himself out. Has to get away from this mechanism. Helping out. Vacuum still there though. Ice bath up on crit. But Sniper still takes him down. Can they go for something more? Rockets will fly. But there's too many heroes here. Oh. GD to try and do something and the rest just backs himself out but that is that is Sniper and he picked up an Eagle Song so Butterfly it is in the meantime split push the thing that no Tide Hunter has like no other is gonna be happening here Shock's got TPing in Admiral Bulldog will take a dive um, might be seeing S4 take a dive as well March of the Machine's no longer there Puffs his Ghost after Test of Faith Bannon's going through Headshot BAM you're dead Two heroes, three, oh, well, three in total, of course, with life as well, going down in a short period of time. Yes, I took down some um, damage on the um, on the tower, and this is going to be it. DD, they can kill stuff, apparently. They've proven time and time again. But what they're having issues with is taking stuff back in return for those kills. <coughs> uh, which is something like uh, buildings. Tier 1 tower top, even still standing. It's gonna be uh, DD that's gonna try for the Roshan now they know that they've been spelled out. Are they gonna stick here? Looks like they are, though. Actually, they shouldn't be worried, too worried with the Tinker and the Nature Prophet out, out on the side. Having said that, they can, of course, CP the moment they get it back up, but it's too late and it's nice for the Pixie Agent. Illuminate's still doing a little damage, but uh, Butterfly complete. I mean, DD looking really good with a lineup that personally, I mean, I've said it. I'm ashamed that they are actually. Well, I'm happy for them that they're proving me wrong. And I like it. Who knows? Sniper back into the meta game? Yes, please. Well, to be fair, seeing Sniper playing a professional match is already him being back in the meta game, maybe. Depends on your definition of meta game, I guess. It's very different for a lot of people. But we have a pause. Gives us the chance to ch take a look at some more of the graphs. We have the gold, of course, it was a favor of, of No Tide Hunter for a long time. But then No Tide Hunter tried to, uh, to fight a couple of times. And then it went back to No Tide Hunter. We have got uh, the experience graph showing a bit more clearly how it feels that game, this game is going. And it is uh, going towards the 10k in favor of DD. Of course, mechanism for staff that are also up on the gen. Of course, the one thing that you do against a life stealer, you build a force staff because if you open wounds, well, yes, you can manta if you actually have a manta style. But if you don't, then you can force staff yourself away and hopefully stay alive long enough for either your team to come or for the open wounds to uh, get away. Okay, this is a dangerous crystal maiden. Double damage up on rise. Look at that, taking down angels with a double damage rune. I picked up an urn as well, by the way. Crit in the meantime. Also picked up a ghost after. Nothing new yet on the sniper. Let's see if we can find some new items. It is a crystalis up on the Shokska, so that will be Shokska going for Deadless and going for a need that semi carry build. And they need that too. I mean, yes, sniper is nice, but if you look at the sign of uh, No Tide Hunter, they don't only have the Life Stealer, they also have the Tinker that's making a pretty big impact into this game. And if that's not enough, Nature's Prophet can be turning into a very good semi-carry if he gets uh, the gold, if he gets the time in that case. Oh, hello Nice Bomb, hello Top. There's already Shokska turning uh, turn into a pig. That's open wounds, gonna happen. Shokska, no chance. And the Nature's Prophet ultimate helping out as well. And that was uh, Loda picking up the kill.
Next bomb at its finest. And just the mobility proven uh, proven right there. And Ever Bulldog, by the way, also has a hand of Midas, so two hand of Midas is on the same team. Can't work out. But yeah, I said it at the start of the game, and that was just a typical uh, proof of that. And of course, I mean, Shurska has been up against Maybe that uh, S14 tower, before, and he has just stick to, stuck around when. Shox got TP'd in, so it wasn't something new, but then also having a lifestealer TPing in together with an Aegis Prophet, that was just a bit too much. As we see a sniper Dyer's getting away, they realize that's attack. the real one. Are they gonna dive this? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> Shrapnel going down. Radiant's top tower is under As they attack. just decide to push. In the meantime, towers are actually even with uh, both tier 1 towers still up on uh, DD on, the, on their short lane, on the DNO Titan Hunter on their short lane. And it's actually a uh, more TPs coming in, forces them away. Calculus hanging around just in case. As for continues to push top lane, I mean, this is just a constant, constant nuance for DD. They have to constantly keep this in mind and send someone here because this tower, once it drops, I mean, it will be naked barracks and it's sh slowly but steadily the tower is being chipped away with life points and that is gonna be painful. So we have 2200 gold up on the life stealer, we've got Aki, Ghost Scepter up on him also. 1500 gold on the Jakiro. I'm expecting a Ghost Scepter up on him as well. I mean, Ghost Scepter's all around, but that's what you do against a Sniper. And also against a Templar Assassin, of course. I mean, Templar Assassin is pretty dangerous as a semi-carry, but pretty easily countered with a uh, with a Ghost Scepter. Having said that, I mean, this guy is going to make them regret they picked that one up, because, of course, we've seen it before. Test of Faith going to, through, that, uh, through that Ghost Scepter is pretty painful. But for now, we're going to see both teams being fairly uh, careful once again. I mean, it's, it's a bit surprising. We said it at the start of the game, and we said it again now. We realized that DD lineup, in theory, is not strong until it reaches late game, where Sniper is actually just massive. But it's going to reach that point. And it's been a long time since I've seen a Sniper being, oh, being so dangerous, or having the potential to be so dangerous, and that's definitely this guy. And he constantly has people around him as well. I mean, he's not alone. He's going to stick around towers, going to make sure that he's not going to get ganked. And if, if he does, he has a Mantis Owl. 3,500 gold up on him. And also, if you look at levels, he's actually highest level in the game together, of course, with uh, with uh, three others. But it is uh, it is indeed quite entertaining for uh, for me and hopefully for you too to, uh, to see Tinker doing this well. Nightworth is actually him on top here. Rockets will fly, they go for Calculus, they don't see Shocks, guys, still invisible. Calculus is gonna be the target. When will Shocks have come? Here he goes. Melt damage going off on Bulldog, Ghost Scepter activated and no Titan Hunter. They don't know what they're up against exactly now that that guy's just showed himself and they will just TP out and everybody will be in time. TP's all around and TP's are all successful. There were actually five heroes of DD going towards the bottom lane to try and help out. Exclamation marks coming off the tower. Maybe. Want to try and take it down. March of the machines will of course try and stop that. Mm, it doesn't even reach the people now it does. Leads away. The sniper is with his range. He can just attack the tower if he wants to. Ah, oh, he actually picked up a half of the dominator. So we're going to see Satanic up on the sniper. I think Link is having quite a good time. I uh, will show you the grass again up on request. Radiant's Been showing them a lot. I mean, there's not really that much difference as last time we saw it. Tower goes down Dyer's indeed. Chen actually picking up the last hit for that one. But it is uh, tower slightly even. Experience graph still the same as when, when we last saw it go up. And it is uh, still around the 10k mark. Normally I, uh, well, graphs aren't that interesting until after a big team fight. Or when teams are just farming evenly as the TP just got cancelled by S4 on the bottom lane. It's, it's too risky. In the meantime, Rise, he is going to be going down. No. Ghost steps are not working for that one. Um, just out of position by himself, and that's something, just a small mistake from Rise. But uh, he pays for it with his life. It is loaded that picks it up. The life that is, the gold. And has got 4,200 gold. Is he going to go for an Abyssal Blade? Would be nice. Of course, it's, uh, it's a great thing that you can do, just TPing in Abyssal Blade when you come out. And that is going to be something that is very painful. Just a solid disable for the sniper, wh whether he gets a BKB or not. As we have got a TP out now from uh, the Lich Prophet, who was actually standing right there, but couldn't get away. 2,400 gold up on the tent. Curious to see what he's going to go for. Picked up an Ultra Drop. Might be going for a Sheep Stick to get some extra disable up. Uh, of course, also there's a lot of the same already up on Otanon, so they have to deal with that one. 
If they can get a disable off on the Tinker, that will make such a big difference. 4200 gold on the Tinker, though. As he uh, takes down uh, another quick wave, because he can. With uh, Bulldog actually taking care of the Ancients, he is uh, picked up a auto derp. Oh my god, is it gonna be another sheep sticks? Sheep sticks all around. Side of vices, that is. And there is the Reaver. He is so farmed. Oh, invisible Jakiro just passing through. Being very safe here. There's no wards up. And maybe they're gonna try to do something. And now they realize, hey, there was someone that has vision up on us. Let's place a sentry ward, but also at tournament we realize, okay, now they know that there's vision there, so let's just get away from that one. His invisibility works out anyway. Team is back home. All the way home, actually. So we do have uh, more creeps taken out. I mean, we see the rest of DD, apart from Sniper and the, and the Templar Assassin. Everybody is being fairly careful. They're making sure that they're just uh, sticking together, sticking with their carry, for that exact, for that matter, and just making sure that they can uh, can stay alive and and can make it to, well, it's, it's already late game to be fair, but can make it to very, very, very late game with this guy, who has has now should have finished off his uh, satanic. He is looking so good right now. Uh, though I have to say, I mean, you see the you see the farm for the life here, and his abyssal blade is indeed complete. He is pretty damn farmed as well. And we do see that it's only sniper that is so very high up there on the side of DD. It's just uh, we've seen it work out in team fights in favor of DD. Oh, crit! I am not sure if you want to be here. Get turned to pick. That's the abyssal blade. Hello, and probably buy at the Shiva's guard. Rock is still hit. Gonna try to hide. I'm crit. I like your attempt, but you know, the whole thing about if they don't see me, I don't see them. Or if I don't see them, they don't see me. That doesn't work. Dota. Doesn't work. Nice attempt though, but he, he dies again. And with the board just being placed there by uh, by uh, Tino Envy. Upon the high ground, getting some extra vision up on there. there are <laughs> I like this. With one invisibility rune. That, of course, Eternal Envy had when we saw him sitting on his uh, Jakiro right there. He forced out 200 gold to be wasted on DD. Like, they realized, okay, there is some kind of ward here. They re the Nature's Prophet Ultimate bounced through, so they have to have vision. And that is going to be uh, the Sentry Wars being placed purely because of that. I like it. That's it. That's, I mean, it's a small victory, but still a victory nonetheless. It's those kind of small victories that you have to have. I mean, just remind you people that this is a best out of three for the finals for the 4PL Cup. Because I realize that a lot of people have uh, joined since uh, the last time that I checked. So it's uh, this is game number one. We're going to see two or three games between these two teams, depending on, of course, uh, who's going to win the first and the second. And it's a winner takes it all 400 euro cup. And I say euros, not dollars, so take that in mind. And the second place gets nothing. Nada. We have got um, smoke up for DD. Because <coughs> they know Roshan is back up again as well. Let's see if they can do something here. We don't have a smoke up, of course, on Link, and neither on the Templar Assassin, so those two are oh, still uh, going to be safe. Let's see if they can do something. Here comes uh, Link from the side. Radiance bottom tower. Exclamation marks go, of course, off because there's uh, sentry wards standing here. And they realize Sniper just went in there. Ice Path, gonna hit. Radiant they still think they're safe though. Keep that in mind. They yeah. No try not to think that they, they know that they're there. It's just a matter of what they're gonna do instead. Oh, I like this. Tier 3 Tower, dead. Loda, Night Bomb, gonna go through. Nature Prophet all the bouncing through. The barracks, fortification goes off. Here comes the TPs. Who they wanna stop this from happening? There's the open wounds up for Shokska. More CPs are gonna happen now, and it might be too late for Shokska. Yes, it is. There is Grit. That's the melee barracks going through. Going down, that is. And that is the rest of No Tide Hunter backing out. Because they got what they came for. And even so, they will be getting the roads of it. Loda just being recalled by Aki. What a play. I mean, this is just mind games right here. You want to take Roshan? Fine, we got heroes that can TP and we'll take your tier 3 tower. And then we'll force you to TP and we actually kill off the first one that TPs there. We'll help them with Abyssal Blade, of course. They still get the barracks. They still get Roshan. This is win, win, win for no Tidehunter. It's not even a trade anymore. 
She's being picked up by Bulldog. Aegis uh, goes to Loda. So we have 4,500 gold already up on, on him. Mechanism also up on Aki. We already saw that, I think. Oh. This is a port keeper of light. It's got 3,400 gold. Illuminate. Going through Link still farming, of course. I mean, he couldn't do that something in that fight. I mean, the split push from the China Archer is still something that Sniper cannot do that much about. He needs to have those head on team fights. It's going to be difficult. And now that the uh, the barracks are down here, I mean, this is a constant advantage, of course, with no Tide Hunter. So we're going to probably see them trying to do the same thing. They have been on the top lane the entire time, of course. Tinker made sure that that lane constantly got pushed out. They don't have any other tier 2 tower down yet. But that will be their, their goal. And they're actually uh, playing some on this tier 2 tower bottom. TPs are going to come in. They just pop it as well. Going to go for the tower now. Fortification, of course, already just used in the barracks. Radiance bottom tower. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. Oh yeah. As uh, Ethereal Blade finishes on the sniper, oh this will be a nice bomb. Oh, no bomb. Just coming home. Now it will be a nice bomb. Middle. Hmm. Well so far, look at what look at what No Titan has done. They're just being so careful. They've basically scared DD into leaving their base because the split push potential is so big. Choxka gonna get attacked. Invisible Blade is well hand of God. There's still the refraction, but it doesn't matter. It is just too much. And that's the ward, of course, up on the high ground doing his job. And he was basically the only one that was slightly unafraid to be going outside of his base and paid for that with his life. DD. I mean, yeah, they have a super farm sniper who's now going for Daedalus. But they actually need to have team attack. fights in order to make that work. And they might Radiance have a super farm sniper, but no Tide Hunter. They've got a super farm life stealer with now an assault crash. They've got a super farm Tinker who's building towards a Lincoln Spear. We, they've got a super super farmed uh, Nature's Prophet who's got his own sheep stick as well and 5.5k gold. It is uh, it's just a bit too much. We're gonna see if they're still gonna be able to do it though, because in in uh, in theory, if DD gets one good team fight, they might be able to push uh, push through a lot and get their own advantage on the lane. It all depends on where the lanes are. Though having said that, I do realize that where the lanes are is gonna be mostly de determined by No Tide Hunter with that amount of pushing power that they have. All the lanes are constantly pushed out by them. Top lane pushed out, middle lane pushed out, bottom lane pushed out every single lane. And also make sure that No Tide Hunter doesn't have that many places to farm because of those lanes being pushed out, but it's uh, it's not bothering them that much, as we can see. Illuminates. Look, it's flying. And Crit just constantly standing here. 1400 gold off on him. I mean, buybacks are going to be important for the next fight, so we're going to check who has that. Nobody of the Radiant actually has buyback. There's Vivek on the life hero, on the Nature Prophet, on the Keeper of Light, and on the Jakiro actually. The two supports have been uh, the buyback. Well, oh, no, Tide Hunter. With 1900 gold up on the Jakiro. And there's gonna be four heroes soon again from No Tide Hunter. Well, I say four, but I think that I should mean uh, five. Nature Prophet can, of course, TP in. It's gonna go for the barracks. Blinding Light. There's the range barracks. Uh, I mean, range barracks, of course. Rockets flying through. Can they go for more? Illuminate. Hitting. He moves away. They're looking for someone to overextend to kill off. Adidi knows that if they go in right now, they are overextending. And since the top lane is already lost anyway, might as well just not go in at all. But in the meantime, of course, they try to split push that slightly. Tinker TPing in. March of the machines to go. Buck is flying. Look at this martial machine still doing so much damage to the sniper and this is two ways. It's just uh, it's just so much. Loda, of course. I mean, only a moment ago we saw him picking up the assault cuirass instead of the hand of Midas. And now already he's got four point seven K gold. He is getting so much farm. 
And he will probably won't see him buying anything until actually Roshan's Aegis is gone, which is in a minute, so it's soon. Double so they might tr just try to force something out before that minute is actually over. But we'll see. Take a look at the levels. We have a level 25 in our midst. There is the life stealer. So we're gonna take one more look at the experience graph. Uh, it drops down again in favor of DD. Uh, sorry, in favor of No Time Hunter, of course, uh, with those last couple of fights. But this is the last time I'm gonna have the experience graph up because if there's level 25s in the game, and in total, it's gonna be ending out in zero if everybody turns level 25. So we're go we're just gonna let it leave there. As um, right now, it is not about levels. It's not about the gold that much, even though No Time Hunter, of course, is very much ahead there because they just have that control over the map and the rest of DD. They just can't farm. They can't find a place to farm. It is that simple. No place to f farm at all. Well, this is some nice Dota going on right here. Ah, there we go. Finally. Just got things. Ooh, creeps to take down. Of course, I mean, they have got these lanes to take down constantly, but it's only half the farm here. And this is basically all the farm they get, so they don't even get three full lanes. No, they get two and a half. Bit of a sh it's a bit sad, in all fairness. But yeah, Goldcraft, therefore, going towards the 20k in favor of No Tide Hunter. And it just seems like No Tide Hunter, I mean, they realize they can't head on fight DD. And DD realizes they can't do anything but have a head on fight. But No Tide Hunter is just continuing to farm up just to make sure that maybe, in a while, they will be able to take a head on fight and they will be able to just uh, push in by brute force. But until that moment, they'll just be content in uh, just farming, and that makes for very passive gameplay, unfortunately. As we have got, um, yeah, they're just sitting in their base, and and this is just no time to farm, but the rest aren't doing anything, and they can't go out. The last person to go out died. Link actually goes out. Let's see how far he goes. Illuminate going to. Eh. That will push the lane out again, so he doesn't need to go out again anymore. So that's nice. Lane pushes him top. Summation marks all around. We see, uh, I mean, th look at this. This is. Oh. This is the vision that DD has. And I like that they still have some extra vision with the traps being there. But the traps will go away because, of course, it is uh, Envy that has actually got a gem. Um, had a gem. Gave it away. Where did he give it to? Oh, come on, he just had a gem. Wait a second, back to the folding. Where did it, what did he do with the gem? How confusing is that? He hit the gem. Somewhere. It's not in the courier. It's not on the floor. I am disappointed. Maybe he destroyed it. I don't think he should be destroying it. Oh, this is frustrating. In two minutes I will check the chat and I will see their suggestions of what happened to the gem. So maybe I'm just blind. I hope I'm blind. Well, that sounded wrong. Lincoln's complete on the sinker, also level 25, 4.8k gold. I mean, this is this is just a waste. They're just waiting, just waiting. And this is, I mean, 29 kills in 54 minutes. I mean, I can understand it from DD because they just have that late game thing going on. But from No Tide Hunter, they seem, from my point of view, needlessly scared of going in. 5,300 gold upon the life here. Is he gonna go? Yeah, I don't think so. They're being so they're so careful. I don't think this is gonna be a rape here, but it could be. Otherwise, an MKB will probably be uh, better. We'll find out though. Dag on up on the tinker. Okay, about something. MKB it is. Uh, 
And that's of course to make sure that the butterfly effect, I know, pun intended, is not going to be working on, uh, on Link anymore. Not the, no evasion. And he's taking down a solo Roshan. There's no chance, no hope in, in Dora that DD can try to compete with this one. What's it? There goes the armlet, and he has 4.5k gold again. He's looking pretty ready with his items, to be fair. But then again, who doesn't? Well, they just probably picked himself up a Daedalus to has 5.5k gold. That's nice. Tinker Dagon. That's nice. He doesn't uh, want to use it yet, though, or at least he doesn't put it in his inventory. He's probably going to have a soul ring sold when he has it. And um, probably only wants to put it in his inventory when he has it at, le at a bit higher level, because right now it doesn't do that much. Nice board there by the dyer. Bottom right corner, there's a gem. On base? Ah, I'm lost! In the trees. Do they actually mean this? It is here! It is there! The hell? Split push, by the way, because S4 is just distracting them while the rest is uh, sitting here smoked and all. And there, there's plenty of sentry wards. <laughs> and then actually now it's the uh, loader. So I'm being turned. Oh, he turned to creep into a piglet. Lincoln's no assassinate there. Warding. I think uh, I think no time has decided let's stop uh, farming and just go for for stuff. So they're just trying to split push. They just profit bottom, S4 mid, and the three uh, others top. Even though of course top is already down, but the moment that the moment that that they find an entry, I mean, they're just gonna make sure that those creeps are gonna be in the base helping them out. Tinker, being very safe, sending some rockets, who's gonna go in first, Shock Sky doesn't really want to be it, they just force it, try to force out a fight, well in the meantime Nature's Prophet's still bottom, but this is positioning of, of DD, they, they are defending the rest of what they still have, the buildings that they still have, you can have the top of our base, come on people, fight! Fight! I mean, uh, we look at the buybacks. Everybody's gonna buy back, apart from Radiant right Side. So no titans. They can waste some uh, some lives if they want to. They even have the ages. Come on. They could try and brute force this. I think still. Start in the bottom lane. Start with the Tinker Sniper. That is. I keep confusing the Sniper with the Tinker, name wise. Mitch Prophet still there. Tinker is teeping and teeping out constantly. Come on! This is starting to get silly. How long can they stay here? This game is already 55, 59 minutes. Oh, maybe they. No. Ah, Loda. Hello, Tower. I don't care about buildings. I'm taking down the Tower. Tower Maybe dead. Um, that is a bit of an unfortunate. Unfortunate. Um, Fortification is the Link still able. Oh, look at this damage! Look at this damage! Link just bashing stuff! But there's the Ethereal Blade helping out, and it's actually Dark Sina dies. He buys back. Loda being turned into a piglet. Shokska going for him, and Luminate flying through. And now Loda turns around, goes for Shokska. Shokska being turned into a piglet. There it is! And in the meantime, Sniper just hitting stuff. 
can he get those crits going? Gets turned into a pickle. Loda still alive. And even if he did die, he still has the Aegis of Sniper going for S4. S4 uses the Ethereal Blade again. Illuminate going through. And that is gonna be open wounds. Finally, Sniper. He drops. He buys back. He wants to be here again. In the meantime, Barracks are gonna be taken down. And it is Mega Creeps. Go the way of no Tide Hunter. And there finally goes the Aegis. But Mega Creeps it is. And Dag on level 4 up on the Tinker. There it is. Ice Path locks in Calculus. Turns into a chicken as well. Piglet rather. Illuminate going through. That is already Calculus going down. Can they go for more? Dagon not picking up the sniper. Oh, uh, it does pick up Rise though. <laughs> that is uh, Yeah. Ulti, the arm. Dagon upon Dagon upon Dagon. GG will play. goes out. Well, what the anti climatic ending? But this is only game number one. We're going to see game number two between No Tide Hunter and DD for the 4PL Cup finals. 4PL Cup, a two weekly cup that can be played by anybody that wants to join. If you want to support them, which you do, because we wanted to be able to um, to uh, see more of these uh, tournaments, even though I would prefer them with a bit more action than this game in particular. But you can go to facebook.com slash 4pl.dota2. So go do that and uh, let's jump ourselves into game number two. Stick around.